In the last video, we focused on writing the formulas for ionic compounds. In this one, we're going to take those formulas and name them. So how do we do that? Well, most of the time, it's actually easier than writing the formulas. All you have to do, first of all, is isolate the cation. That's the first part of the formula. And you write its name. So you have to know those names of the ions from the ion chart. And then write the name of the anion. And usually, that's it. Now, sometimes you will have a case where that cation, that metal, is a transition metal. And if that's the case, then you have to write its charge as a Roman numeral in parentheses. So you may remember cases where we had Roman numerals in parentheses, like iron 2 or iron 3 or uh, manganese 4, something like that. You'll have to be able to write that, that Roman numeral by figuring out the charge. And, and we'll have examples with that here shortly. Now, there are some exceptions to this. There are three transition metals, uh, silver, zinc, and cadmium, that do not need to have that Roman numeral in parentheses. And the reason for that is that you know pretty much all of the transition metals can have more than one possible charge, except for these three. You know, silver is always plus one. Zinc and cadmium are always plus two when they're in compounds. So you don't need to use a Roman numeral for those. Now, there are some exceptions in the other direction. There are a couple of metals, actually several actually, that are not transition metals, and they will need to have the Roman numeral in parentheses. These are generally speaking, if you look at your periodic table, the metals that are kind of squished between the uh, transition metal area and the metalloid line. So that would include uh, elements such as tin, lead, antimony, and bismuth. So we'll have some examples of that. And like I said in the last video, to get good at this, you have to do lots of them. So we're going to do lots of examples to get good at naming ionic compounds. So here's the first one. Once again, we just have to isolate the cation. That's the first one. And Mg, of course, is magnesium. And then NO2 is called nitrite. So you have to know those, those names and, and formulas from the ion chart. We don't do anything with that, that other two. We don't say dinitrite or anything like that. It's just magnesium nitrite. Most of the time, this is pretty straightforward and simple. Same thing here. Ca is calcium, and PO4 is phosphate. And that's it. You know, calcium and magnesium are not transition metals. We don't have to put a Roman numeral or a charge or like that. We just name the metal, name the nonmetal. Now, how about this one? Same, same way. Rb is rubidium. And then HSO4, that is on the ion chart. It's called hydrogen sulfate. And that's it. Just It's called rubidium hydrogen sulfate. And then we have something like this. Fe is iron. And then ClO4 would be called perchlorate. Now you might realize that iron is a transition metal. So we have to go back here and figure out what's the charge of that iron. Well, we have to be detectives in a, a way here and realize that this 3 shows us that the charges had to be swapped, like we learned in the last video. So this 3 came from the fact that that iron was a plus 3. So this is iron 3 perchlorate. Most of the time, you can figure out the, the charge of the Roman numeral just by looking at the subscript on the other ion. Now let's try a few more. Let's try this one. Same deal here, same way of, of naming these. Cu is copper, and Br3 is bromate. But copper is a transition metal, so we have to figure out what's the charge on copper. Well, notice that you know BrO3 is, is bromate. That's its formula. There are no other subscripts that were swapped on here. So this tells us that the copper and the bromate must have had charges that canceled out, since we didn't have any swapping going on here. So the charge of bromate is minus 1, so copper has to be plus one. So it's copper one bromate. have to be kind of like a detective here to figure out the charge on some of these transition metals. Let's try this one. Now this formula looks rather similar, but it is different of course. Cu is still copper and BrO3 is bromate, but do you see how it's different this time? 
the charges were swapped. So this time that two tells us that it's copper two bromate. So different formula here, different, uh, different compound completely. How about CdSO3? Well, Cd is the symbol for cadmium, and SO3 is the symbol for sulfite. So it's cadmium sulfite. Now, cadmium is a transition metal, but notice it's one of those three that does not need the Roman numeral on there. So it's just cadmium sulfite. Cadmium is always plus two. How about this one? Pb is lead, and NO3 is nitrate. Now, lead is not a transition metal, is it? But it is one of those other exceptions. We have to put its Roman numeral on here. So we look at the charges. We see they've been swapped. And that 2 right there tells us that this is lead 2 nitrate. So hopefully you're slowly getting some experience with naming these ionic compounds. It's likely that if you took a first year chemistry class that you learned about this and, and got a chance to practice this as well. But it's important to, important to get very good at this in AP chemistry and general chemistry. How about this one? Uh, in this one, it takes a little bit of skill, but we have to realize that it's, get, that it's basically split kind of down the middle here. NH4 is ammonium, and NO3, of course, is nitrate. So this is ammonium nitrate. How about this one? We have Ni. Well, that looks like nickel, doesn't it? And then the CrO4 is called chromate. And nickel is a transition metal. So we unswap the charges. And this, this 2 tells us that the chromate was a minus 2. And the 3 right here tells us that that, that nickel was a plus 3. So that's why it's called nickel 3 chromate. On this one here, Mg, of course, is magnesium. And ClO4 is perchlorate. Uh, magnesium is not a transition metal. Magnesium doesn't need any Roman numeral. It's just magnesium perchlorate. And then we have this one here. Fe is iron. And then Cr2O7, that's the formula for dichromate. And of course, iron is a transition metal, so we have to unswap the charges. Uh, the thing is, there are no charges or subscripts to, to unswap. Looks like they've just canceled out. So if the Cr2O7 that dichromate is a minus 2, the iron had to be a plus 2. So this one is iron 2 dichromate. Um, once again, it had to be kind of a detective here to figure out what the charge is on that transition metal. Since there are no additional subscripts placed down here, we know that they had to cancel out. The last four here, I would call these challenge questions. If you're good, if you're very good at these, you should be able to answer these last four. So let's see if you're an expert. So Ca, of course, is calcium. But what about the O2? It's not oxide. It's peroxide. Because calcium oxide would have been just CaO by itself. But calcium is a plus two. Peroxide's a minus two, so they, they, they canceled out. So it's CaO2, calcium peroxide. This is a tough one. Peroxides are very easy to, to miss if you, if you aren't looking very uh, carefully at those. How about this one? Here's another challenge question. Hg, of course, is mercury, and NO3 is nitrate. But what about the charge on here? Well, this is mercury one nitrate because mercury one is a polyatomic ion with the formula hg2 with a total charge of plus two so it's been swapped plus two minus one that little two right there actually shows that this is a mercury one so there that's another polyatomic ion that can be a little tricky sometimes to work with mercury one here's one that looks a little bit unusual we have crcr04 well uh, the CR right there is, of course, chromium. And then CRO4 would be the chromate, polyatomic ion. Uh, chromium, we're going to need a Roman numeral here. And we don't, doesn't look like anything's been swapped. So we have to uh, assume that the charges have canceled out. So if chromate is a minus 2, then this chromium has to be a plus 2. So it's chromium 2 chromate. Kind of a tricky one there. And the last one, this one might be the toughest one of all of these. I'm not sure. PB, of course, is lead. And then SO4 is sulfate. 
And we know lead needs a Roman numeral. What's the Roman numeral? Is it two? It's actually four. And that's because we had to simplify here. Uh, the sulfate is a minus two, but there's no two down here. There's, a, there's understood to be a one. So this tells us that we had to simplify from a 2,4 from a down to a 1,2. So it's actually lead 4 sulfate. Lead 2 sulfate would have just been PBSO4. I put a few tough ones on here I, because I know that I have some excellent students here watching my videos. Thanks for watching. Hope you're subscribed. If not, hope you'll click that button. And thanks for watching. Hope to see you again.